Because a chaplain, a chaplain will normally just see as uh, you know one, you know a religious uh, 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 stand in various institutions, be it in the military, paramilitary, or any kind of uniform institution, are uh, the places where you normally will find uh, a chaplain uh, operating. However, there is what is called international chaplaincy. Now, it is the international chaplaincy that has the right to be able to get into certain situations uh, that only officers, like the military officers, can get into. For example, uh, consider a state of war and the people need spiritual guidance, they need comfort, they need uh, uh, reassurances to be able to get uh, on the field. In a war situation, civilians are not permitted to get into such grounds. But an international chaplain is licensed to get not just into a war zone, but also to be protected by the military leading such an international chaplain into that environment for him to be able to render what we call pastoral care to the people that are in such a crisis uh, situation. Now, uh, in well-developed countries, America, uh, Australia, Canada, you know, all over Europe and what have you, uh, you have to be an international chaplain to be able to operate in those uh, countries. For example, there are, uh, you can have a crisis situation in a city. Only internationally licensed chaplains are allowed within such vicinities because they have been trained specifically to handle a such uh, a situation and to be able to bring repose and confidence, not only to the sufferers, but even to the officers in the field. So you see that the chaplain work more with uh, uh, the police, the military, paramilitary, that could be customs, could be uh, uh, immigration and what have you. Not only that, uh, chaplains work also in hospitals, in prisons, uh, they work in uh, um, tertiary institutions, and even in the nursing practices, uh, that is maybe outside of the hospital, you find chaplains there. Why? Because everywhere, human beings have a need for a spiritual connect. When there is a spiritual disconnect, People don't function properly, which is what amounts to unbelievers, non-Christians, wanting to seek, you know, diabolical powers in order to protect themselves. But the chaplain there is the one now as a priest who will bring that repose, who will bring that confidence and bridge, you know, the gap in the spirituality of the people. I had the privilege uh, for two years. I worked uh, directly with the South African police uh, service as the head chaplain of the Kuruleni region. And uh, I saw that uh, most of the officers, the police themselves, needed more pastoral care than even the people they were, you know, administering to out there uh, in the field. So it is a serious situation that there is such a need, you know, that needs to be breached. The international chaplain is licensed to do that. That is what the international chaplain is about. He has the courage to be able to represent the priesthood, to represent God in whatever religion the chaplain may be representing. For instance, I am a Christian. And so my organization is a Christian uh, a chaplain organization. There are those that are interfaith. There are those that are Muslim, Hindu, and what have you but everybody come on the same ground for the sake of humanity. 
to salvage humanity. So let me quickly dive in because we don't have much time to get into all of these. Now, uh, so let me talk about uh, the United States Chaplain Organization. Like I have mentioned in my introduction that uh, United States Chaplain Organization is first among the three most uh, recognized uh, chaplaincies in the United States with a database of over 8,000 members. Now, the United States Chaplain Organization, I, I became a member 24 years ago uh, in South Africa and uh, have worked my way through the ranks and by the grace of God, is now the international vice president. Now, uh, Tosco, as we uh, call it, it's a licensing institution. I'm going to bridge. The, I'm going to be able to explain that you know in a brief and why there are differences between chaplaincies. Now there are operational chaplaincies, and uh, there is the licensing authority. Now we bridge the two. We operate you know, everywhere in the world, and we equally license. Not every chaplaincy have a right to license an international chaplain. As you can see, I am wearing a badge, a crest, that is like a police badge. Let me tell you this, not a matter of boasting. Of all the uh, police commissioners, uh, IGs that you have had in Nigeria, Nigeria have not had up to five of them carrying a badge less of carrying a gold badge. This is a gold badge, and uh, it's one of the highest badge you can find anywhere in the world by ranking. Now, uh, the reason for such is this, that uh, there are nations you will get into that will, for the sake of this badge, because this recognizes you as a globally accepted chaplain. So it, uh, it, it, it gives you the platform to be able to work in their system without further accreditation. There was a time, there was this argument, and it's still coming. If you're a pastor here, please go and update your records properly because Nigeria, they are still in the uh, uh, working out situations to shut down churches that are not licensed, not just registered with CAC. Your registration with CAC is the first base that you must have. You must be tax exempt to be able to operate properly as a church institution because you are registered as a non-governmental organization. Now, uh, so that is what it is also with a chaplaincy. The chaplaincy, uh, United States Chaplain Organization is, a, is an authorized licensing institution that licenses international chaplains, credentialing them to be able to work anywhere in the world. Giving them training in that regard with 36 credit hours. Now for you to operate as a professional chaplain in a place like uh, America, for example, uh, you will need uh, certain qualifications. You have to have a master's degree either in chaplaincy studies or in theology, which uh, amounts to 100 and 29 credit hours. Now of that 129 credit hours, your licensing takes 36 credit hours, which uh, is what uh, the United States Chaplain Organization will give to you through your training. Now added to that, we are also a paramilitary organization. As a paramilitary organization, it uh, endorses us and empowers us to be able to work within various communities uh, like my brother, I know I don't want, I don't want to dive into that. I want to give you opportunity to talk about uh, community policing now, which is one of the major areas that we are concerned with. We get into communities and bridge the gap, uh, 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 curbing the fear of crime, because the fear of death is worse than death itself. So a lot of people have the fear of crime crippling them 
even without having experienced crime in the first place. So one of the major things that we educate the communities on is how to overcome the fear of crime and how they themselves can become aid to their brothers and to their sisters. Jesus said, if whatever you do unto this little one, you have done unto me, caring for them, providing for them. So we liaise with the police. We work more with the police. You know, so we liaise with the police in helping to curb crimes in various communities. We are trained more or less like the way the police is also trained, you know, and we are trained by the military specifically. So we have an edge when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, that. So we have a military training that enables us to be able to tackle in, uh, uh, situations of crime and the likes. Um, I think this is a brief. Uh, by the time, I don't know if we are going to ask your questions immediately, but maybe your questions will help us to dive into various areas, you know, that will uh, give you more enlightenment. Now, what does it take to be a member of the United States Chaplain Organization? First off, the first thing that we do is that the Interpol, we have to vet you, that you don't have any criminal record anywhere in the world. You cannot be a licensed chap if there is a criminal record against you. But by law, if you committed crime that is over 10 years in record, it can be expunged. If you have not committed any other crime after that record has been created. So that is for that. So the number one thing is that the Interpol must vet you that you don't have any criminal record. Secondly, you must have basic knowledge, communicative knowledge and skill. So we encourage people, if you have your first degree, it is a good ground uh, for you. If you have uh, uh, theological degrees, it is a better ground for you. However, if that is not a limitation. Secondary school holders, you know, would prove that yes, they can communicate in whatever language is the their major base. It's enough uh, 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 credential to admit you because you have to go through training and you have to be able to stand for yourself in, uh, in terms of uh, the trainings. But we encourage also because there are various fields. You're going to learn crisis management. You're going to learn negotiations and mediations, you are going to learn all, all manner of things that are going to come in uh, on how to uh, mediate and interact with community and be able to uh, bring counsel to those that need it. So counseling becomes one of the major fields that you will learn as a chaplain. Uh, in terms of cost, Dr. Saze actually have broke out on your behalf very efficiently. And uh, we have brought down the costs, you know, so much so. And uh, so those that are interested in coming in, I believe that information will be given to you uh, as at when due. I don't know, except if Dr. Saze wants me to uh, get into uh, all of that, you know. Uh, however, everybody is welcome. When you come in, uh, uh, you are registered and then you can go through your trainings and then you are released into the field. Some of the benefits, some of the advantages, for example, I just give you this as a tidbit, it is not a license for you. But I, for example, because of the position that I occupy, I am treated equally uh, like uh, any major general in any military in the world will be treated and accorded with respect. I don't go through queues, for instance, whether at airport or anywhere, I have a free VIP passage because of this badge that I carry. It's a, it's, it's a long walk to be able to carry this badge for, you know, so don't think that you're going to come in and tomorrow you are carrying a badge. No, <laughs> Just to let you know. So it's a long walk and a lot of sacrifices. Uh, I'm also happy to let you know uh, Dr. Osaze is also uh, uh, carrying a similar badge, just as you see me uh, uh, carry. Amen. If there are questions, 
I will entertain them. Over to you, Dr. Sabin. Thank you very much, sir. Um, what most people don't understand is that Africans are just everywhere in the world doing wonders. And our duty is to make sure we keep, I want to use the word exposing them, you know, wherever they are, until we all know that, yes, we have we have what it takes to be what we want to be. So he has said so much about the um, membership of chaplaincy, like because of time, if there's a, enough time, we'll talk about it, but if there's not enough time, You'll be getting it with your email, uh, getting it in your email. Like I said, once you have a certificate for this program, uh, you are very, very sure to get invitation to uh, become a cadet. I'm sure he's going to talk about the cadet level and the officer's level. Uh, yeah, I would like him to talk about that uh, briefly so that we can move on okay. to the next speaker. So if you right. finish this program, I think you know the next step to go to. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, as a cadet, you are coming in as a trainee officer, where you will be educated in the basics of what chaplaincy is and how to operate as a chaplain. Now, it accords you the privilege to be able to you know, work with the police in collaboration with the uh, police uh, community uh, public relations, uh, like my brother, uh, uh, Digun, and uh, you know, uh, various other community related programs. You, be, you become a volunteer after your training and certification. You become a vol, you can work as a volunteer in a police station where during roll calls, you are there to lead them. You are there to uh, uh, also counsel with those that need counseling and guide them spiritually. Let me tell you the truth a lot of police need spiritual guidance, a lot of them have the fear of whatever is going to happen to them, the fear of death, the fear of mishaps and what have you, as a result, when you see them behave, you know, anyhow on the road, it is because of the psychological problems that they have and they are carrying about. So the chaplain should be available for them to give them counsel and help them through with prayers and to be able to face their day. The police usually have road calls. Some have it only once in a week, where all the officers will come together, have a short parade and all of that. And then the chaplain is there to encourage them, not just to preach at them, but to give them messages, uh, 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 you know, instructions that will give them confidence to be able to face the day in a positive manner. So the cadet is trained to be able to do that. Whether to the police, to the in the hospitals, you know, and where uh, or, or whatever institution of your interest. Now, entry for the cadet, uh, which is supposed to be seven hundred and fifty dollars, but we have through negotiations with Doctor Sazer and also localizing it, have brought it to a hundred and fifty thousand naira. And I'm sure most participants here deal with naira, so. Uh, so 150,000 naira, which can also be paid instrumentally during the process of your training. Now, by the time you are now certified, you will have uh, like uh, an operational t-shirt, like what you see me wearing, and also uh, 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 this official cap. Now, some of you don't know, the reason you respect the police officer is not because of his father's name, nor his name. It is not even because form actually that he's wearing, but because of the crest that he carries on his car. And that is why you give him compliments. And that is why co-officers give each other a compliment because of that crest that is respected. Now, so you have the privilege to carry a crest. May I also uh, tell you those tidbits? Tidbits. I was once driving on the night Road and the police stopped me and I introduced myself. Of, of course, the officer was drunk and uh, one little pull some trust. He asked me to get out of the car, uh, saw a laptop, and uh, you know, was trying to embarrass me. I just got into my car and I drove. And they started chasing after me with their vehicle. I knew there was a uh, then it was the days you have these two checkpoints almost everywhere. So I drove to the next military checkpoint and I stopped. Introduced myself to the 
the CEO, the officer in charge there, and, and I told him that police vehicle, they are chasing after me. He said, for what? Respect to them, the, the vehicle came in. They asked all the officers to begin to do frog job, including the inspector in charge, for disrespecting an officer, a senior officer. And I was asked to go on my way and I entered my car and I drove off. That is some of the respect you can get. Because not just the fact that you are working in collaboration with the police, but the fact that you are carrying this crest on your head, that is what is respected. So when you are not credentialed, you will get some of these privileges, but we always counsel, please don't abuse the right. Don't go and behave the way we are asking you to prevent others from behaving. Amen. Uh, now that is the first level, that is the level of being a cadet. And uh, after that, you can choose to become an officer. An officer is not only licensed, but now it is an internationally licensed officer and he carries a badge. He carries a badge. We are not able to negotiate that because of the various things that are involved with that. And the, the height of it is that you'll be carrying a badge. It is $750 uh, dollars, uh, to become uh, an officer in that category. Then there is also what we call the marshals. Two stages of marshals. One is $1,250, the other $500, that is full marshalship. In Nigeria, for instance, we have commands. We have the national command uh, that uh, we are just relocating the uh, the office from Lagos to Abuja. They are still in the process of relocating the uh, the national office as we speak. The national office, the national uh, secretary, is on this uh, meeting right now and uh, is relocating to Abuja because of this. Now uh, we have commands in various states in Nigeria. We have commandants that are in charge. I saw earlier uh, today the FCT command uh, uh, officer. Uh, she's here. Uh, on, on, on this platform right now. And I'm sure there are, I think the Lagos command officer is also here. I don't know who else, Delta and what have you. Uh, they may also be on this platform. I can, out of 34 pages, I can only see one and I don't want to begin to scroll. Amen. So there are so many of them that may be here uh, right now. But uh, those are the levels that you get into. And each of the level, uh, there are the rankings that it gives to you. For instance, you come in as a, uh, as a marshal, the first level category, you, you come in as a lieutenant colonel, equivalent to a lieutenant colonel in the military. You are not a, you are not a lieutenant colonel, you are a chaplain lieutenant colonel. There is a difference. Amen. So you don't go and impersonate a military officer. And so there are things that you represent uh, are within the uh, the scope. Amen. So, I hope you're satisfied thank, with that. Thank you very much, and sir. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is excellent, and I want to thank you for your time, sir. Uh, I think from going forward, we are going to create a special session for, for the chaplaincy to talk to those that will be invited to join after we've issued our certificates. However, only those that will be issued certificate, we will have your record that we have the opportunity of joining starting from cadet level. I will say that I'll be moving on to the next uh, speaker. Uh, we're talking about PCRC. We have an excellent expert and representative of PCRC. And he'll be telling us about PCRC. Uh, because of time, we might just uh, make it 10 minutes. PCRC is a household name in Nigeria. We did international community policing. And he's going to be talking about community policing in Nigeria as a case study that uh, people from other countries, because this platform is made up of people from several countries, uh, Uganda, Zimbabwe, South Africa, uh, UK, Canada, so many other countries. So uh, 
However, the Nigerian PCRC is going to be used as a case study of uh, how PCRC should be or is being managed. Over to you, sir. Uh, you have 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then later we'll get questions across. Thank you. You can unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, sir. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Over, sir. Yeah, um, like I earlier introduced myself, I'm Otumba Ambassador Bolaja Digo, JP. Um, I'm blessed to hear the first lecture, which interface with what we intend to say. Um, just like uh, our doctor said, we're going to use Nigeria as a case study. PCRC is called Police Community Relations Committee. I repeat, Police Relations Committee, PCRC, that is the abbreviation. And we have to ask why was PCRC formed? It was formed by the then Inspector General of Police by name Etim Yang from Cross River, if I'm not mistaken, Calabar. We find it necessary then with what has been seen within the community and the insecurity within the community. And we all know up to now, the standard of what a security should look like. In other countries, one policeman is equivalent to 100 people. But in Nigeria, we are one policeman to 1,000 plus. The total security outlets we have in the country is not up to 550,000 above. So the security aspect then was not okay. So the Etim Yang himself felt it very, very necessary. Maybe I may take us back to a small story. When there's an accused in an area, I believe those people that are in this country knows what is called the chiefs in the area, the Obas, and in Yoruba, we call it over. In Aousa, we call it Seriki. In other places, we call it Eze. When arrest is being made, and you are not be care you are not careful, the more they can move you up. So this man, when he was asked to go and investigate a case, he first went to the Eze and gave a complaint. Eze said, "Sit down. I will bring the person within twelve hours." And he sent his people outside, and they got him back within twelve hours. This necessitated him when he became the ID. Said, "Look, that community policing must be." And you can bet me, we know ourselves more than the police. Each person that lives within the community knows everybody. When I was growing up in Jos, I'm a good footballer. I play with Alsas. I play with Yoruba. I play with Fulani. Everybody, we are one. So if anything happens, you are a visitor within our vicinity. Our parents will know because we know ourselves. Well, what we say the purpose of PCRC is to enhance security within the neighborhood and within ourselves, which is what we are coming back to do. With the past IGP and the present IGP, they have been working on community policing. You cannot transfer an able man to Joss. He cannot know Joss. You cannot transfer man from Joss to Maduguri and say he knows Maduguri or bring somebody from Maduguri to Lagos. Well, when we say Lagosians, the O1 base knows Lagos. When we talk of uh, Kano, the, the um, Yandabad Yandab knows it. When we talk of East, we saw Odochi knows it. So every person has his own peculiar of security. And that is why the BAT of security policing, that PCRC was formed in 1948 by Etim Yang. Why do you have to encourage it? It's very important. 
I believe if each community guides its or her own area, and there is a link, for example, in Abuja, if there is a link from Kuba to Duse, Duse to Zuba, Zuba to Dede, Dede to Karu, all these things, we can have a leader within ourselves that will be controlling that area. So if anything happens within the neighborhood, you should be able to cancel it before it gets down. I think laxity has been given by depending on the government. The government cannot do much as expected. So I will, I'm going to endorse us that we should encourage. And that's why when I was talking, I was saying that all of us can be a police community relations committee. What does it take to be a public um, police community relations committee? It's very simple. You must have something doing. You must not be an ex-convict. You must not be a person that is wanting in the community. You must be a good person within the community. And why we don't have classification of um, ranking is because a organizer, a painter, a mechanic can give information because we are the intermediary within the police and the community. And in fact, PCR is the eye of the community because when you have a problem, you come to the community, community because policing itself, the meaning of policy is that you want the way the police should police you, and this is the only way. There must be vast vassal. We must belong to the police, and the police must belong to us. So I don't want to go to that. It's saying that the law is meant for this, but the policing itself, it is meant for we, the community. In other countries, the police community dictates for the police. But we are coming to the area in, the, in, in Nigeria that the policing is now being known, especially the past IG and the present IG, there's nowhere the IGP goes now. You ask where are the police community relations committee. And to enhance it more, the PCRC has all over the, uh, the nation, like the same rank with the police, like my uh, Leonard friend just said, we have the divisional police, we have the area command, we have the zone, and we have the DIGs, then talk of the IGP. Our national chairman is only one, Alajima Gajolania, and he's a workaholic, and he's been going around the whole world. We have a page where I want all of us to join. PCRC is a voluntary organization, like I said. And why we are coming is to aid the police, because we know the strength of the police that they don't have much. And I want to let us know that the PCRC is having the same opportunity a policeman is having. There are two things we cannot do. You cannot carry weapons and you cannot go to court because we are not trained on that area. But you can make arrests. You can investigate. You can visit the prisons. You can visit the police station. You can visit the cell. Because it is your neighborhood, it is the community that is there. And how do you do it? It is true, our little dues we pay every month because we are not paid. So people will ask, what is the advantage? There are a lot of advantages of being a PCRC. It will get you closer to the police. It will get you closer to the community. And it will give you contact to the community and the police itself. I have next nice five minutes to go. I've been watching the time. So what makes you to be a police officer, I mean, police community relations committee? It is the enthusiasm to serve. And we have a slogan, which we said, PCRC, we now call it service to the nation and humanity. When we say service to the nation and humanity, you say PCRC. It's a slogan, but you have to be a PCRC before you can make that so that you don't be impersonated. And like my, my, my last speaker said, we have trainings too. And luckily, for the past five, 10 years, we've been engaging with the NGOs, giving us 
a lot of enlightenment on how to move. And we're having much collaboration with the police. And Cuba has been set aside as a pace setter, which gave us a better plan and a better relationship between ourselves. So what makes you a divisional police is that, like you have divisions in every state. In Kano, we have, four, in Abuja, we have 43 divisions. And in every division, you will have what is called a chairman of a division. And the chairman of division, we now have what is called a, a state, which all the divisions report to the area command, back to the FCT command, which is a state. And in the whole 36 states, plus FCT, we have 37 FCT, we have 37 state commands, which they are the one in charge of all the states. And once you want to be a, a member, you need to visit the divisions or the area command or any zonal office to find out when do they normally have their meetings. Our meetings are always every once in a month. It depends on the divisions. Some take Saturday, some take Thursday. The FCT command holds meeting twice in, in, in a quarter to give the report, while the national does their own once in a quarter. So we have the same rank the police is serving. The DPO is equivalent to the divisional chairman, while the area command goes with the area commander, while the zones go with the AIG, and the other ones are the DIG and IGP. So what it takes is that it is, it is the mind to serve, because it's an act that has been established by the police. And I can tell you that this is the only committee that has been existing for the past 36 years and that not been dissolved. It is the only committee that has been created and is the only recognized divisions and committee in the whole world by the act of the IGP. So once you become a PCRC, you are already a policeman in Mufti. And that does not give you the guarantee to go and say, yes, at the, at the toy gate, you show your passport. At the, where you are supposed to be kind, you are, because you must be a leader by example. And I want to thank all of uh, the, the producer of this uh, opportunity, because it's another way of conversing policing within the uh, Iraqi. And I will want us to say that by the end of the day, when I have my number given out, I want to hear from every person that is in Nigeria that is interested to join the Police Community Relations Committee, which is called PCRC. We have vets, we have ID card, we have everything that will guarantee you, because if there's anything on the road, you have the right to stop and check. And if somebody is speeding, you have the right to wave him down and block him and wave him and tell him, caution him. Where he refuse to be cautioned, report. Because the next police station, you can make a call and he will be uh, arrested. So in order not to go to, uh, beyond my time, I'm looking at the time, it's a minute too. So I will leave room for any other question that may be coming up for the purpose is that it is for us to serve and complement the police. And we are the eye of the police. At the same time, we are the correctional body of the police because we all know what it is. Because if you look at what is happening these days, it is the work of the PCRC. A lot of policemen have been dis dismissed. Those people that have been hanging on people's phone, they have been dismissed. You can see somebody that was disrunned from uh, from inspector last week to a copra. So it's not left for, and some people are sacked. So all the person that slapped somebody in Enugu or Portacourt has been dismissed. So the police is the only one that punishes the offenders. If it's an army today, you will hear he's a non-soldier. He has entered the barrack. So I'm not condemning. But I want us to join the police so that we can have more peace within the community. I want to say thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, this is very nice to hear. And um, for those of you that cannot hear, please check your audio. I'm sure everybody can hear. If you can hear, just type yes. Excellent. Now, uh, once you get your certificate, please, we are going to be sending you emails because through your email, uh, we should be, after processing your certificate, you process your certificate with your email and phone number. 
So it gives us the opportunity to send you details about joining PCRC. We'll send you phone numbers to call to join PCRC. We'll also send you details to join the uh, chaplaincy. And uh, please, may I inform you that no single certificate for chaplaincy, for PCRC, I mean, uh, community policing for forensic has been issued. No certificate has been issued. No certificate has been issued for healthcare administration. It is after this Zoom session that certificates will be issued. And if you have issues, please kindly sort it out with your trainer. And for payment for certificate, only pay to the person that handled your class. You have an admin, one, two, three admin in your class. Please, please only pay to that admin that handled your class. Paying somewhere else is longer our business. So when you come out and say you paid for certificate, you didn't get certificate, you should be able to communicate with the person that handled your class, taught you as a facilitator in your class. It's a very simple thing. Number two, you cannot get a response to any email anywhere in the world if your email starts with a capital letter. If you, if you end your email with a dot, you cannot get a response. We need to understand this. Your email must be registered. Yes, your email must be registered. I have cases where people just go and write their name at gmail.com and they are waiting for a response for an email. And when you don't, they don't get email, they say uh, they were scammed of their money. Please, you must register your email with Gmail. Yes. And um, please, uh, details about membership of these two institutions will be clearly spelled out with the officials of these institutions who only direct you to them and let them know that you did a program with Laplage. And I also advise the institutions in charge to honor the certificates that will be coming. Our certificates is affiliated to the United States uh, uh, chaplain, chaplain organization. And I'm also a member of PCRC. So uh, the certificate is well respected and it's well recognized. So once you present your certificate as someone that have done trainings with us, it will also help you to quickly get your membership. But you must meet all the criteria spelled out to you. We are not going to cut corners in this case. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Apology, uh, we excellently appreciate your time. We'll be moving on to the Dr. Joseph to talk about to talk about forensic. So we have only ten minutes, so that we'll use the many few minutes. We we'll end this program by eight thirty. So that we we'll use the many few minutes to take questions from one or two persons. Yes, uh, Dr. Joseph, are you there? Is Dr. Joseph there? Okay, over to you, doctor. Yes, doctor, please unmute yourself. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes, Thank you once me. again. Yes, Good in, ten, in 10 minutes, sir, you just tell us about forensic um, science and forensic, I mean, forensic yes, investigation. You, we've, we've done all that in the class already, but we just need a face to it and want to hear from you as a practitioner. Sorry? Yeah, about these two programs. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Okay. Am I permitted to carry on? Yes, go ahead. You have 10 minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you once again. And um, it is uh, a good opportunity to be here to share the knowledge with each and every one of us out there. Um, first and foremost, to start with, forensic science, it is actually a growing science. And it is a science that has been so, so important in every one of us, the world. It being that a lot of things that were so difficult for human beings to understand through the forensic science, it is easier for us to understand that. That is why we are saying 
forensic science has actually come to change a lot of things from bad to good and from good to best. Having said that, uh, somebody may ask, what is forensic science? I don't want to go into a lot of uh, drama to start talking about the definition of forensic science. But I will make it in a very simple way for each and every one of us to understand. Forensic science simply means the science that creates relationship between human beings, teens, science equipment, and technology to get facts of issues beyond doubt. Please I underline the word beyond doubt. Reason is this. Forensic science can investigate everything into details and come out with the basic facts that when a forensic expert appears before the court of law and tenders his or her evidence, it will be beyond doubt. I'm saying this again beyond doubt because if it's a police that appears, a police prosecutor in the court of law will say he has proven the case beyond any reasonable doubt. However, as a world there reasonable doubt, but in forensics, we say beyond doubt because we have all the technological equipment to prove all the facts. Why am I saying this? If we all remember the, a brief history of King Solomon, when two women appear before him consigning a uh, that is uh, a, uh, a child that was dead and the one that was alive. There was this issue of the other woman was saying she's the mother, the other one was saying she is the mother. Then King Solomon said, okay, bring a sword and divide the child into two. Then one woman said, no, leave the child, give it to this woman that she's saying is her own child. However, I know she, the, the child is my child, but when the child grows up, I will see the child. What are we saying here? It is named forensic psychology. That is to say, if that thing will happen today, through the forensic science, we have what we call the DNA. That would have been taken care of that. And it was true there that research, forensically, we have now invented the procedure of determining what to call the paternity or maternity of a child. So you can see the beauty of forensic science. That is one. The other side of the good aspect of forensic science is that whenever there's an issue and you want to find out who actually enters a place, there are what we call the fingerprint. It is also part of the forensic science. Also, even your handsets now, because of the investigation of forensic science, you have what we call these handsets that you use your finger uh, print to off and on it. You can see it is all development of forensic science. If we can go on and on and on. However, because of Okay, well, we've lost him, and um, I want to believe that he will reconnect again. Time factor. Okay. Are you there, sir? Are you there? I think we've lost him. Okay, while we are waiting for him to reconnect, uh, I will want us to take questions for the speakers, the first two speakers. I will might just be able to entertain just three questions each for each of the speakers. This, your question should be very straightforward, very uh, straight to the point, and um, 
On issue of membership of any of these organizations, please, you don't need to bring it up. We are going to send you full details, full contacts, and possibly have a group where you have another session with uh, Apostle and his uh, lieutenants in Nigeria and abroad to answer your full questions. It could be a, a two hours program where you ask all the questions you need to ask, you get all the information in it. So you don't need to bother yourself about membership now because of time. Secondly, uh, we don't, you don't also need to bother yourself about um, this certificate, this course certificate here because I see a lot of people posting their emails and phone number, it's not needed. When you get back to your class where you did your training, talk to the admin. The admin will give you instructions on the next thing to do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think Mr. Joseph is back. Yes. Over to you, Mr. Joseph. Yeah. Welcome back. Are you there, sir? Unmute yourself, sir. Thank, thank you for your patience. I'm back. There was a little network problem. Thank you, sir. Can I continue, please? Yes, yes. Hello? Go ahead, sir. I'm back. Let me continue. OK. Go ahead, okay. sir. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. OK, thank you, thank you. OK. Sorry for the uh, mix-up in the network. So as I was saying, the forensic science is really a very important uh, thing in our lives. When um, I was talking about a forensic pathology, forensic pathology, we are aware if there's any case, just like uh, the person that discussed about the policy uh, uh, um, committee, you know, if there's any issue of uh, maybe somebody died of community, you see, they can just rush and go and bury that person. What they would need is that to recommend that the dead body should be subjected to what to call the autopsy. What are we talking here? In the forensic science, we will say there are three ways that somebody can die. The first one is when somebody lives for a very long time, like we will say three score ten, at least between 70, 80, 90, 100, 100 and so on. A person dies who assume it is a natural death. And then the unfortunate one again, if there's an accident and somebody dies, okay, we say it is an accident. Center. Then the top of ceremony or a celebration or promotion party, he comes back very healthy the following day uh, to go to work. The wife just discovered that the person is dead. See, we in the forensic science, we use what to call the forensic uh, uh, toxicology to find out when he was in the party, did he actually take drinks that contains some certain things? You see, so science. Science is a course that tries to find out facts. And when we're talking about forensic science, we are saying it's a science that tries to get all the facts of anything that happens. So forensic science is a very good thing for each and every one of us to know. Having said that, there are other aspects of the forensic science because of time factor. I will just list some of them. Some of the important aspects of the forensic science are the DNA, the biometrics, the crime scene investigation, and we have what you call the forensic toxicology, the one I have said. At this point, I will move on to the next topic. I don't know if I should this. Are we together, please? Let me confirm. Okay. Hello? Are we together? Okay. As I was saying, the topic is actually combined in two aspects. We have the forensic science and we have the fraud investigation. But please, I want to confirm if we are together, you're listening to me, please. Please, can I confirm if we are together? 
Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you, doctor. Doctor, we can hear you. you. Can go ahead. Just unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, sir. Doctor Joseph, sir, you can unmute yourself. Okay, um, I think we might probably be having some technical issues with him. Um, we are going to have a very special session with him and the two other speakers who we'll create time for that, for those of you that are interested. It's not going to be a certificate program. It's going to be a session, an interactive session where people will learn more about forensic science and fraud investigation. And from the little he has said, you know that he's loaded and whether you're a policeman, you're a military officer, a civilian, no matter the, your background. The, the question would be, what is fraud? Okay, it's back. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Good. The, the question would be, what is fraud investigation? But before we go into what is fraud investigation, first let us understand what is a fraud. Fraud simply means anything that an individual will be convinced After his money, the way that if the person knows the exact facts of that issue, he or she will not release the money, which means it is a process of deceiving an individual to release his money or to release his property. That is in a fraudulent way. That is why it is called fraud. It has to do with a lot of activities, especially in our current economic situation, where people, let people, let me put it that way, don't want to work hard to earn legitimate money. They capitalize on either the ignorance of some people or some people who are not exposed to actually cheat them by bringing in some uh, kind of uh, criminal actions and that is why now we have what to call 49 49 is really a code or a section in the criminal act on the criminal code of the federal republic of nigeria who says criminal activities and that is why it is called them 419 so it's actually a very bad thing and it is actually causing a lot of problems to many individuals let me tell you what I'm asking about this. It makes so many people even die at the time that God has not allocated them to die. Reason is this. Look at the Yahoo issue that we're talking about. Somebody has worked for over five years because in the condition of service of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if you serve for 35 years, you are able to retire, except if you are in the academics or if you are in the judiciary. What I'm trying to say is, after putting a good number of years, you retired, and somebody through these fraud activities defraud you of all the earnings. Either it could be your gratuity or your pension, and the whole thing is gone within a second through what we call the cyber crime. How will that benefit? And that is why lecture on fraud is very important for us to be aware that, look, we have to be very careful. There are people who are crafty to get your heart and money in a very simple way. So you should be very careful if anybody comes and is giving you tips or anything, please think twice. And if you're not very sure, of what the person is trying to uh, make you pay money or do any other thing, please ask or confirm. Nobody should come and start saying, 
investment of this within a short time in the account in the so payback period. If somebody comes and says this is very short, please think twice. It could be a fraudulent activities. Now, let's go into what we call fraud investigation. We're talking about fraud investigation. We're saying somebody has defrauded Mr. A. And Mr. A was actually finding out is this still genuine or his money has gone in the wrong way? So the person can now report officially that look, or he paid money for ABC and has not gotten. So, what is the next action? So, relevant security agents or agents will now go into the investigation by taking the statement and all that. So, in some what we are saying is this. Fraud investigation is what we call reactive investigation. But the most important thing is for one to be proactive. This is what we call fraud prevention. And what are the methods? Because of time factor, <laughs> we have this aspect. Fraud prevention is one. Think twice before you go into business investment. The second uh, part of uh, fraud uh, prevention you as an individual don't accept any business that will be high profit in a very short time. The third one is there are basic rules for a honest person to follow to invest. The fourth one is it is good for you to contact enlightened people before you go into a business that you don't know. This simple steps can prevent you to be a victim of a fraudulent people. And by extension, because fraud tell you no matter how careful they are victim to the fraudulent people. And that is why lectures of this nature that important for each and every one of us to listen to so that you more exposed. So when somebody comes up with anything, you will not say, oh, in forensic science, we learn <laughs> like this. <coughs> we have to be careful. Because a lot of criminals are in either having investment of uh, techniques to defraud working people. So be on your watch out. Then I was saying the federal government, anywhere in the world, they put in place some security people to help uh, people who are not all that uh, exposed in terms of uh, preventing fraud to happen to them. For that reason, this country, we have what we call the EFCC. That is the uh, economic, we know what we're talking about. They are there to actually investigate all the financial crimes, especially the Yahoo, Yahoo boys and all that. We also have what we call the ICP, that is the ICPC, that also take care to make sure that uh, problem uh, cases are handled logical conclusion as victims are compensated and then the guilty uh, parties are punished. Then we also have <laughs> the other security entities like the police. The, 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 the police also help to see that uh, what is prevent and all other security entities that are Okay, um, I think we've gotten uh, so much from Dr. Joseph, and we want to call it a day there. Uh, unfortunately, we might not be able to take uh, questions, but what we are going to do uh, so that we don't uh, spend so much time here because of the bad network, uh, we are going to put people into different groups. 
for those that will be getting certificates for uh, chaplaincy, we're going to send you full details about United States Chaplain Organization and how to become a cadet. You can also discuss being an officer there and any question you want to ask, you'll be able to ask. If I, I'm going to have a Zoom session for that, separate, very separate, so that we don't have ourselves discussing too many things here at the same time. Uh, secondly, we are going to create a separate group for those that want to be members of PCRC, and you are going to have time with uh, Utuba Bolaji Adigu and other high-ranking officers of PCRC talking to you about membership, helping you to sort out your membership case, where to join, and which division, which uh, command to join. Uh, yes. So uh, for forensic and science and fraud investigation, we are going to create a separate group so that you have excellent time out with Dr. Joseph. And for those of you that want to become chartered members, um, you can, um, those of you that want to become members, you can actually have the opportunity of becoming members of the chartered body, chartered by the federal government. So these are the three groups we are going to create for you so that we don't have to need to waste too much time to um, ask too much question and talk uh, too much about things here. So that please, and if you are, if you are interested in any of the three, because by virtue of getting the certificates, you are going to get information on how to become members of the three. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, please, this Zoom is being recorded. This Zoom is being recorded. So you're going to get a copy of this Zoom. Yes, and then um, to be sent to your class. Please, if you have not paid for your certificate and you want to pay, pay to the admin that handled your class as a facilitator. Don't pay elsewhere. Don't pay outside your group. Pay to the admin that handled your class as a facilitator. Certificates will start being issued from this night, but especially from tomorrow. For those of you that took courses with uh, mental health, public health, and health, and whatever, if you are here, please, it's very wrong for you to make payment in a WhatsApp group to an admin and you are in the class and you've been told that you can sort out your certificate issues from tomorrow to start private chatting. And you are private chatting me, asking for me to give you a certificate when I don't have your payment of your proof of payment. We just talked about fraud investigation now. Please let's do things the right way. And by God's grace, I think this country is going to be a, this country and Africa in general is going to be a shining star in the best practice, everything we want to do. And we're going to start here. We have to start from somewhere. And now is the time to start from that place. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to appreciate you. I appreciate your time. We're sending the video to your class this night. Even if it's 12 in the midnight, it's going to be sent to the class. I'll make sure you get the video, the recorded video. So don't worry. Tell your classmates not to worry if they're not here. And then... Um, I want to also advise everybody here. The next Zoom we are going to have from now henceforth, any unwarranted post or messages sent, the person will be exited. Let it be a standard practice we are going to establish. We all deserve to be respected. Every member here deserves to be respected. Everybody here deserves to be respected. Thank you very much. And God bless you all. See you in the WhatsApp class. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank